Uh, food is a really important part, a fundamental part of community life in our direct. Um, and that is, we have different opinions of what is hygienic and what is not hygienic. If you've ever been, been camped with Jack Jane, his opinion of hygiene is fairly low <laughs> as compared to what um, this student would think. It's uh, full of magical moments. It's full of good opportunities. <laughs> and sometimes people think that uh, coming to lectures could be a waste of time and it's uh, getting in the way of what I really want to get on with. So, I think one of the fundamental questions really about group cooking is just hygiene, how much, and how to pack it. And like a lot of this is common sense, so it's, it's just trying to bring to um, our forefront in managing what we have, we're going to plan for our first night's meal, so making it it's, uh, being prepared. So a really good resource of how much to uh, cater for groups is that you will have it in your, or you have the resource, and it will be in your bushwalking and mountain craft textbook. So if you need ideas, just uh, the appendix at the back of the book is quite a useful place to start. Whilst it's uh, designed for um, one person, um, you, you know, it's not hard to do your mathematics, it's a good place to start and you can base what works for you, for your own appetite, or for your group's appetite um, in the beginning of the spreadsheet. So what we're really going to do today is go straight into preparing our group meal for your or our trips for Wednesday night or Friday, Friday night? Yeah, Friday, Wednesday night and Friday night will be your group cooking. So we're going to spend about 20 or 30 minutes or so working through how we're going to do that. So I'm going to suggest that, because uh, we've really only got um, this space to organise our group meal, uh, and there's 60 odd people going out there, and we, we could have chickens and opinions. So I'm trying to corral our, our opinions into a very short period of planning. And planning for um, 30 people for a meal is fairly, it's, a, it's simple but complex at the same time. So I'm suggesting we have um, um, uh, two meals, one predominantly, um, one is a, uh, an Indian butter chicken and one is a vegetarian meal and if we have enough quantities of that we should probably cater for us. So, I'm, so here we have our two groups, missing a couple of people who had signed up uh, a week ago. Student one, student two, on uh, the, I can't bother, I can, I can figure it out, but I can't bother trying to figure out who hasn't signed up. Uh, so there are two, as according to uh, sign off duties, there's our two trips. And my suggestion right now is that I'd like you, and I've just done this quite randomly, I want you to divide into your respective trips. So, so it's just a trip um, A on this side of the room, trip B on this side of the room. And I randomly just said, okay, if we're happy with this, this if we're happy with this kind of process, that, um, and if you know this missing, it's because you have to sign up to sign up G, so you're actually, if you do know, if you've read the email, you are on trip two on the weekend. Um, that if we're happy with those two meals, as a starting point, um, and I'm happy to negotiate, I'm just trying to make it quick and simple, and uh, if you think in your group that you get there and go, man, I really don't, I don't, can't see us eating butter chicken, or I can't see us having a basil and vegetable stir fry, when it changes up a bit, that's fine, I'm just trying to make it quick and easy and simple. Um, so we're going to have the way, I, the way I think about it is that you're going to meet and you're going to plan the menu, like quantities and the amounts, and make sure we have everything. And then same with the veggie stir fry, and then a group that makes sure we actually have all the resources we need to cook, you know, like we have enough woks, enough pots, um, 
transistors probably aren't going to work terribly well when you've got a, a pot this big for rice or a wok this big or a number of woks this big to do your stir fry. So we need to we need to do some planning. So, so the way that I think about it is that uh, the meal crews will, will just meet and figure out the mathematics of how much food to buy, figure out who's going to buy this food, making sure it gets to uh, the canoe sheds at 4pm on your respective days, <coughs> figure out um, the money. The resource crew just have to organise all the pots and the pans, make sure they've got them there, how they're going to clean them, how they're going to, who's going to do the prep, who's going to cook, who's going to clean, and again, and the, and the money. <coughs> how's the money going to get collected? How's the money going to get, once it's collected, how's it going to get to basically going to buy this food? So there's a, quite a lot to organise. I'm sure there might be questions. So if you, if you haven't figured out, um, so this is what I'm suggesting for the menu. I'll lift that up on the screen. Um, I've also got a few paper copies here as well. And these are only suggestions, but it's a starting point. Because there's lots of things we could, I know there's a lot of things we could eat out there for two nights, or so for your night. But I just think, you know, Tommy, to me, they a way of starting the process rather than spending endless minutes thinking about what are we going to eat out there on Wednesday night or Friday night as a big group. Uh, any questions about the process? Well, I'm sure I haven't thought about every single consideration. So I'm making a bunch of different things before they get Well, I reckon... Um, <coughs> Like each meal is going to be a Yeah, like that, like that. Like, I think that's a really good question. I've tried to think for that one. Like, you can either put more, because the butter chicken menu, because I've just, don't know where I pinched it from, it's really old, I've used it lots, um, is there's no vegetables in it. So if you add more vegetables to the butter chicken, it would make sense to me. Or you, I thought, oh, maybe you just have the stir fry veggie, have that bigger quantities. And uh, first they feed 20 people and have a bit less chicken. That's a cheaper way of doing it. You know, there was a call, so I don't really mind it. As long as you, because you guys, I'm trying to leave a lot of decisions up to you guys rather, rather than me trying to solve it. Solve it all. Like the math isn't very hard, but I <coughs> think thinking through this process, because as an outdoor educator, you, if you are catering for big groups, you will need to think through that. Uh, so I make sure you. Um, I'd just like to know who's here today. So, if you, as you know, the lectures are 80 to 80% leaders out here, actually. 80% requirement. It's a hurdle. Just to kick this up off, please. Um, what was that in the last week? Is it just putting it out there? No, you just, just go and read the LMS. I've explained it twice. If you weren't here last week, the responsibility is only to look to find out. For me to repeat myself in. It's actually on our mess as well. Sorry. Any other questions about what we're doing now? Could you leave the um, responsibilities page sort of slide up? Yes. Yep, lovely. Yep, like this. Uh, there's your. Tr tr that slide or next one? Next one, I think. Okay. So I've got money. The way you solve some of the problems that we've got for trip A or trip B may be different. The resource people might also go, um, oh, well, trip A might already have um, three or four walks out there. Um, we could might go to forest with their walks, um, or, or so forth. Um, uh, resources like we do have a number of walks in the shed. And we have a number of pots in the shed, so there are resources just readily available um, in the canoe shed, but we just need to make sure we have them. But we don't actually own, we actually don't own five sets of five watts or five big pots. We just come up with this and how we're going to, how your group 
use the resource group, I'm going to solve all those issues. So uh, the resource group will be known from the ROSA, I would imagine. We'll somehow avoid communicating it. <coughs> all right. So I'll leave that there. So let's trip A, trip B. Get in here, hopefully, is enough. It looks like it's a pretty cool pass here, which is lovely. Thank you for joining us. And we get into it. Like, 
Yeah, yeah super tight. Um, I don't know. Pump game. Like, it's not that like, you know, it was really just out of it. I was stuck on it. There's none other than sour cream. I can sour cream. Liam said sour cream. I think I hate it. It's sour cream. Is everyone out there happy if we still do barbecue? Thank you. Cool, 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 cool. So, like, I'm allergic to barbecue. It's God. Yeah, I think I was going to be back. I was to be back. I was going to be back. I was going to be back. I was Oh, 
Rice is so cheap for some candy, so let's try and find the best candy. Yeah. Yeah. And then how are we actually cooking them though? Like, are we needing a gas stove or like yeah, the fire? Yeah, I think or? we have to organise that. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, you, you, well, you. Dude, there's new barbecue. You know, one of those web barbecues. Like, what resource do you need down? And the two sets of resource. Yeah. Oh, sick, I don't know. Wait, isn't that up to them? Isn't that what they do? Isn't that their job? Like we tell them how many ingredients we we are going to buy, and they have to estimate how much. We can just bring we can just bring them to the jars. Yeah. Oh yes. I feel like we need Well, I think it's because the people that are in resources are going to contribute to the money. Yeah. Nah. Or we could just do a. Or we could do a fucking picture. She was probably the only person on the trip that tried to like not eat butter chicken. I think she'd leave it in. Oh no, no, no. I think Charlie was saying Charlie and Tim would be the only ones that would be. Get the totals together and put like and divide it by how many minutes. Or we could just do a butter chicken payment and split it between like say if we all buy it and split it between you know over 20 million people and then people just pay for butter chicken and then they pay for the stir fry on two different payments instead of combining them all and then trying to divide it. So like the total amount that it costs for the ingredients for each separate meal gets divided by everyone in the room. Yeah, that would be fair. Okay. So we're trying to put eight no, 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 just for the payment. Oh, okay. So for the ingredients, it's 50 cents, and then for the payment, it's Do we have the option of asking everyone what they want? So that we can... What do you mean, what do they want? Like, if we're going to have some hours and 15 measures, it's just like, 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 this is what I want. Yeah. Easy, uh, easily take the to make everyone happy. That's the goal that we're looking for. Yeah. Both of the veggies are in the veggie curry group. Yeah. So I assume yeah. that will. It's just so like the people making the curry. Not just that group. Not just that group. Meat rather than veggies. Yeah. Are you okay with that? Huh? You are okay with that? I hate spice too. <laughs> no, if I have enough rice, I'll get it. Yeah. Five chilies. Five cheap red chilies. I can't. I like I Sorry. No, 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 not saying. You're doing exactly what I was going to tell you to do, so just continue doing it. Okay. Yeah, okay, right. Sorry. I'll explain my own. I'm going to stop the practice of putting out the actual.
Yeah, no, that's right. Um, so we have a lot of we are So we have a can Yeah. Which is like one can. So we all have one can. No, wait, how many? We can't do that would be four cans. That would be four cans. Or if we go five cans, just in case. That's like seven cans. And we will be still in the world. Yeah. I mean, it goes into the car. Because it's cleaning. Yeah, we could do that. Is that a Yeah, we could do that. 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 We can buy like a big five dollar bag. How much butter is it? Yeah. Yeah. Just get a five hundred gram block. It's like your standard five hundred dollars. Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably the pumpkin. Yeah, I reckon. The pumpkin. Ooh, pumpkin. We got a sweet potato out of as well. Just yeah. yeah. All right, pull it on. Half of what? Half of what? Is that what we say? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so half, half of that Three, three. Yeah. Two, 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 <laughs> yeah. Why do you keep doing this? It's more my other person. I say, I say, I say, I say, I say, we're doing a curry as well. Speaking, we're going to buy the rice for 30 people. We'll buy the like, naan or a pin of bread for 30 people. So don't worry about that. Why don't you just leave the bread for us? Oh, is the bread going to be for the curry? Oh, I see. We're doing two curries, though. Okay. Oh, wait. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yes. We'll just buy rice for yeah. everybody and we'll buy nuts. Yeah. So, like, you know, like, don't put on your shirt. Make sure it's better than that. What sort of bread should we do? Naan's going to be expensive. We're making it. 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 We could, we could make it. Oh, wait, 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 we could potentially make it. Make it what? Well, if we made dough and brought it with us, then we could like try it on like pan. Like this is going to be a lot of cooking. Yeah, and we're going to have three muscle pans. What? No. Like, to get like, everyone around and cook it all the different shit. No, we're not going to use the one fire here. We're going to use like burn. So, so, just get flour and water. What do you put in How do you make it? I don't know. Well, it's like a nice bread. Yeah. Mac, it's really easy. Okay. Oh, we'll just get the rice. So, five dollars. We want butter too. Um, you can't. Yours, but 
can get that part. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you guys are bread. Wait, is he not going to eat the like, chicken leg? I think that was it. At least three of us have to eat the chicken leg. Yeah, we have one of those. Your group will have one of those. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, just, uh, oh, um, nice. let's talk to those guys. But yes, they've got one. Yeah. Um, can you guys play for the or do you want time? Yeah, it's four minutes. Um, one of five. Does it go wet? As in a whisper line. We can just bring the chicken and chicken. Five chillies. Take some of the stories. A jar of. A jar of. Okay, folks. Yeah. Um, we can just go down there and take a seat. Yeah, well, that's just a simple thing. Oh, yeah. Or just a jar of garlic. Yeah, and we can bring the little jars again with all the spices. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, why? So I was just saying to a few people, like, if you have any issues um, with stuff, uh, come and talk to me, um, and we'll sort it out before we before we go. Like, best to see me before I go away on Wednesday afternoon. So Wednesday will be a very busy day for, for um, Paul and me, because I've got three shoots with you guys in the row, and then it's, you know going to go and pack and blah, blah, blah. So it's a pretty busy day, so we couldn't have talked to me tomorrow, probably. Um, uh, so just make sure that, and I'm sure you've got things like the stoves worked out or getting it worked out. But just remember, we are, we are cooking for 30 odd people in our odd. So make sure you have stuff to serve things with. So yeah, we, need, we need serving spoons. We need probably some bigger knives and a pocket knife. Um, you will need more than just six, six small chopping boards. Um, and I do would like I would like to emphasise that you need something to wash your hands with before you prep you know, before you prep your food or cooking. You, you need to be able to wash your hands. So think about those little things, your resource folks, please, and how to clean up. 
And, often, and this is a note for me more than anybody else, that whenever I do group cooking, I always forget one thing, a plate, because I don't take a plate. I never take a plate, and probably don't take a plate either. So if you're not taking training for your stoves, you might want to think about a plate. Um, just a few other little things to think about is that uh, uh, I used to be a chef before I was an app director, and um, uh, the head chef used to say that a sharp knife is a safe knife. So um, I take that from a professional that a good knife is much better than a blunt, crappy knife. Um, you might also actually have to teach your kids how to chop food, like, you know, like how to get their fingers away from chopping onions. You know, we don't want the fingertips or fingernails in with the onions when they're dicing them. Um, you might want to think about how you, when you don't do group cooking, you, you know, you've got a, a, a nice, slightly bigger knife than a fold out Victorian X pocket knife, then you might want to you know, make cardboard cheap for your uh, knife. So small things like that, when you are working in outdoor ed and you're group leading, you think that little extra thing you might think about than just your individual cooking when you're going down the middle middle or so forth. Now I'm sure we've talked about cooking circles. I'm sure we've done all that. But uh, thinking about other little things like um, having a herb kit. There's a picture of somebody organising their own little herb kit to spice up their meals uh, and to add variety and taste. So. Uh, you, just little things when you aren't working with the outdoors, you need to have a few more extra bits and pieces when you're working with groups and a number of small containers that carry stuff in. There are some really good resources around, like this is a, a resource in our library a book. It's got some great menus. It's written by an Australian. Um, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, on LMS now, there's uh, three uh, PDFs of different resources for cooking, uh, menus, menu types and cooking types and stuff. So have a look at those as well, it might be find them quite useful. Um, it's as simple as, uh, for me, uh, sometimes for me I just on my own uh, computer have my own stock set of menus and I know that I can just multiply them by, you know, that's we for four people, by two, by three, by four. So have your own standard menus that you like. Keep it simple. So you just go, okay, my veggie turn bolognese or turn it for meat bolognese. It's pretty simple. It's one little twist and it's done. And it's because uh, buying food for, for lots of people take, can take up a lot of time, a lot of energy. But you know what? Well, we're cooking for 16 people. We'll probably just need four capsicums, four zucchinis, four carrots. Um, kilogram of mince or some, um, um, you know, a kilogram of um, red kidney beans. So something like that. So have your own stock standard menu. So I'm happy to share that stuff as well. So as I said, this is a really good starting point for uh, mobile trips or mobile bushwalking trips. So you can have, and the weights that might, I mean, like, I don't, I don't agree with all the weights on, on that uh, appendix there in the book, but I've adapted it to myself because I know that what people over time, what I eat and what teenage boys, teenage girls might eat and get a cater for them. So one bit about uh, like, what do we? So moving away from food now, it's more like you, when you know, you know, working in groups in the outdoors, larger groups. What are some of the things that we might want to be aware of around um, personal and camp hygiene? What are the things <coughs> that you that you that you know that you put in place or you might want to put in place? And, uh, when you're working with groups in the outdoors and high, personal hygiene and camp hygiene. Establish like a clear hygiene station. Yeah, so yeah, have a hygiene station. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fantastic. Thanks, Jarrah. Maybe like a separate hygiene station for toileting and cooking. Okay, I've never seen that, but that's a great thing. Yeah, like there's not, there's, it's great that you've thought about that maybe it can be quite separate because, um, yeah, Germs do multiply very quickly, do swap hands very quickly. Yes, that's a great idea. So here's the smell. So um, it's a very old fashioned saying, but it's true, isn't it? That you know that uh, um, and I think what we get into these days is a question is 
we often have um, uh, what's it called? To sanitize or not to sanitize? We have those sanitizing uh, pump pump bowls. Now the thing with those things is that um, they do dry out our skin. Now dry out skin um, actually has more capacity to carry germs. So if your skin is well moisturised, and if you look under a microscope, it has less, you know, you know, magnified less cavities for the germs to, to embed themselves in. So hand sanitizers do sanitise, but uh, they do dry out your skin. They're all all quality hand sanitizers have alcohol in it, and alcohol is one way of killing germs. So if you're going to use a sanitizer, you then you're going to have to carry a moisturiser as well. So perhaps just good old fashioned washing your hands is um, the best way to go about it. So. Uh, so some really simple things like we talked about uh, having a, 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 uh, a hand washing station and perhaps you've seen those, perhaps you haven't seen those. The resource people, I'd like you to have a hand washing station uh, be, and you can set that up, it would be fantastic please. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, like there's four dot points down the bottom, like cleaning tubs. Like some people, group leaders, you have to carry the cleaning tubs. We don't need cleaning tubs for Lake Epilogue because there is a sink. Um, however, the cleaning tubs actually need to be cleaned. They're full of scratches and full of dirt and muck before the trip starts. It's not going to be a really good look. Um, and the idea that, uh, you know, having an uh, a mesh bag, an onion bag, an orange bag is probably the best way to allow our stuff to drip dry and dry naturally. But perhaps we don't really think about, and I know if we've camped in, in the, the Gramps, we know there's a lot of friendly kangaroos around, and if you've camped at Raps, you know there's a lot of mice. So we do need to think about um, uh, our native flora, and four so the fauna is a carrier of bacteria. What's really interesting here is that in the graph here is the graph of a tuna sandwich. Tuna sandwich left out in uh, the sunshine and that it's been contaminated by someone who didn't wash their hands. So you can see in the timeline that uh, it potentially over a number of hours the bacterial growth just explodes from zero to around just under a mid hundred million um, thingies, <laughs> toxins of bacteria. So, cynically, when I look at this graph, I say, well, if I just wait 24 hours, it's going to be clean again. <laughs> so, perhaps if you're going to, if you love tuna sandwiches or chicken or something, perhaps just wait until about 22 hours and it'll be okay. What I'm really trying to say is that inoculation with bacteria on food happens very, very quickly in, 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 a, in a warm environment. Uh, so, bacteria. Um, I'm stacking these low, I'm just going to say stack, it's much easier for me. And these are half the Earth's population. That's a very common bacteria. It's around us all the time. It's a very common way of causing, you know, we get wound infections um, and pneumonia. Uh, one thing useful I find um, is that when I think, when I think about uh, food poisoning, it happens very quickly, like in 30 minutes. So if someone's getting sick in your group, and it's within 30 minutes of uh, lunch because they've had this tuna sandwich and they didn't wash, up, wash their hands before lunch, perhaps it is food poisoning because it's come on very, very quickly. Even two hours is fairly quickly. Um, so E. coli is the polite way of saying someone's got shit on their hands, okay? <laughs> so that's what it is, you know, that's a polite mental way of saying, gee, I've, you know, I've got gastro, or well, someone you probably just didn't wash your hands after you had a turd. <laughs> but what's really interesting that it survives really well in water and cannot be frozen to death. So I don't know about you, but sometimes when I go snow camping, I, well, I don't actually carry, I never carry toilet paper because I just clean my bum with snow. So perhaps when I'm cleaning my bum with snow, I've got to be very careful to clean my hands after I've cleaned my bum with snow. That's awful. That's awful, I know. <laughs> Jesus. 
know a little bit more about my, my course, my practice in the outdoors. So, um, Lisa, Lisa, you're all awake now. You're all awake at 2 55 on a Monday afternoon. Uh, so, what's really interesting is that, like, people go, well, what's the difference between, you know, like uh, gastro, food poisoning, and uh, whether, you, whether you say guardia or jardia, I don't really mind. Um, but it's a. Uh, Jardia takes one to six weeks to, to present itself. So if you've got food poisoning within 30 minutes and two hours, you can probably be fairly safe with your diagnosis in your group that it's not Jardia. It's only food poisoning. So that would be a key difference in your diagnosis when you're working with groups. And there's some of the symptoms. Diarrhea, fart, stomach cramps. So stomach cramps and bloating is definitely not what you would see in a gastro food poisoning outbreak. That's definitely for jarring. So the common theme with all the prevention is wash hands before treatment. It is really interesting the stats that you know, human hands account for 25 to 40 <coughs> percent of all food poisoning illnesses. Prevention it's really easy. Just boil water. Boiling water to boiling point kills all jardia and bacteria. I'll say that again. All you're going to do is boil water to boiling point anywhere that you're probably going to take groups on the planet is going to kill all bacteria and jardia. Or you can use chlorine. So that's two drops per litre. Um, let's stand for 10 minutes. It's quick, just simple chlorine, cheap, and it knocks out all viruses and bacteria. Well, it tastes that great, but it's not going to kill you. So, there's a lot of, lot of um, misunderstanding about boiling water. Some people say you have to boil water for two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, whatever. So, the reference is from Tilton and Bennett in 2002 is that it's, um, it only takes um, to a rolling boil. The time it takes for your hot water to boil to a rolling boil is time enough for it to kill all bacteria and um, jardia. In fact, jardia is killed at 50 degrees, so like it's very low. The good thing about boiling water is it also does a couple of things. It cleans the pot. It's rid of all the germs of the pot. Get rid of all, your, all the germs on your utensils as well, and your chopping board. So it's a very effective way of doing it. As you've probably read already, it's effective up to 5,790 metres. I don't know why it's 5,790 metres exactly, but that's what they say. So, water treatment. So we can also filter um, the bacteria and the virus out. With it. And there's a whole number of pumps, UV activated, so I'm not going into all those, you can buy those on the open market and read about all those, but a water pump is very effective. But at the end, like when we're working with groups in the outdoors, one way to think about our own personal resilience is this, that if we are rested, and if the group is rested, that's a great way of preventing illness when we're out working in groups in the outdoors. When we're exhausted, it compromises our immune system. Eating well. Perhaps it is not very um, relevant for us because we live in a first world nation. However, a balanced diet is important. So malnutrition is one of the world's biggest killers. From that, that, it's important that when we are working the outdoors that we hydrate, that we keep our students and ourselves well hydrated. The old saying is hydrate or die. Um, I suppose that re this next point relates to rest, that a lower stress level, if we're relaxed and we're not an anxious, that it is good for our immune system. Chronic stress lowers our immune system. And, just to re-emphasize, but you know, as a simple, most, the best thing we can do to prevent illness in cooking in large groups in the outdoors is simple, how we started with this, is a simple hand washing station. Good, simple hand washing station. 
So, um, uh, perhaps we've all got a bit of homework to do.